yo, I still can't believe this is real right now, man. Like, <laughs> I see the art, I see the animations, it still doesn't feel real, man. Anyways, uh, what's up guys? Welcome to the channel. Uh, today, of course, we are going to be talking about the new upcoming global first. That's the part that blows my mind, man. Global first. LR Ultra Instinct Goku. And given just how much hype there is in the community, how much hype I personally have for this unit, and I'm sure a lot of you guys feel the same as well, the question has to be asked, right? We have to talk about this. Is the new LR UI Goku the new best unit in the entire game over, you know, the guys that are considered right now by a lot of people to be the best, right? The LR Gogeta Blue and LR Vegito Blue. Is he better than those units? How good is he actually by himself? And all those things. I'm going to try to break it down in this video, give you guys my personal opinions. But uh, of course, this is just my opinion. And if you guys have your own opinions, you guys have your own thoughts, make sure to let me know in the comments down below. All right. Now, real quick, before we get into the analysis, uh, I want to give a big shout out to my boy Daffy from Payne's shop on Twitter for hooking your boy up with some very reasonable prices on my dragon stones which of course helps a lot for this upcoming banner because i'm planning to go balls deep so if you guys are looking to save a decent amount of money on your next dragon stone purchase possibly for this guy or for the upcoming five year anniversary banners then make sure to hit up his shop in my description down below all right so with all that said let's get into it first things first art looks phenomenal i've heard some complaints about it actually some people are like his art looks kind of fake it looked kind of weird but I like it, man. I think it looks awesome. Anyways, that's the art. Um, if we're just going by art, I would say he's definitely in the top 10 as far as LR arts go. But of course, that doesn't really matter too much. Uh, let's move on to actually the Dokkan Wiki here where we can get a more detailed breakdown of everything. And also things are a little bit bigger so you guys can see it as well. Uh, starting with his leader skill. All right. Realm of God category, key plus four. HP, attack and defense plus 130%. Which of course does lead us to believe that he's going to be a non Dokkan Fest, like legendary summon banner unit as opposed to a Dokkan Festival exclusive. It's a little bit unfortunate, I'm not like that upset about it, but if he was a Dokkan Fest exclusive, he would have had a better leader skill, like a 150% to 170% leader skill. He would have most likely led a new category as well, but uh, instead we have Realm of Gods, 130%, key plus 4 of course is great, but still 130% across the board and uh, super SDR types keep us 4, HP attack and events plus 100%. So if we're just looking at leader skill, no, of course, that's not the best leader skill we've ever seen, but most people aren't going to be running him as a leader anyways. Super attack. Uh, he disables enemy's guard, which is interesting, and causes colossal damage, and then the 18 key, same thing, disables enemy guard, and mega colossal damage. So as far as this mechanic goes, it's good. All right, like I'm not saying it's not a good mechanic. Basically, what it means is that when you're fighting, you know, type disadvantage enemies like AGL enemies, for example, since he's, he's an SDR type, um, normally you would do a lot less damage, right? Because the enemy can guard your attacks because you have type disadvantage. But because this guy disables enemy's guard, it means that he's going to be doing neutral damage, like just regular damage against AGL types. So that's essentially what the mechanic does as far as I understand. And of course, it's not nearly as good as like greatly raising attack and defense even for like one turn or, um, you know, super effective against all types like Gogeta gets, right? So it's not anything like that. Like Gogeta, super effective against all types is a completely different mechanic. I think some people seem to mix up the two. They like disables enemies guard, super effective, same thing, right? No, definitely not the same thing. Super effective against all types is much better. Uh, disables enemies guard is good, but I would have preferred like you know, raises attack and defense for one turn or two turns or three turns or greatly raises attack for one turn, something like that. That would have been definitely preferred. Um, but look, it's not bad. It's not bad. So disables enemy's guard, I'll take it. And his passive is kind of where things get really interesting, right? So he gets attack and defense plus 77%, which is solid. And then he has a great chance of evading enemy's attack, including super attacks for seven turns from the start of battle okay great chance as i said in the video yesterday is 
70%. It's the same chance that the Int UI Goku has when he transforms into MUI Goku. 70%. That's significant. That is a very high chance to dodge, right? And then after the seventh turn, you will have a high chance of evading enemies' attack, including super attacks, um, you know, from the eighth turn onward, right? So it goes down to 50%. So he starts off at 70% chance to dodge, and then 50% after the seventh turn. But dude, this is crazy. 70% chance to dodge. You can kind of, you can kind of look at it as like, this dude has a 70% chance to reduce all damage received by 100%. Because if you're dodging an attack, you're taking no damage. That's basically 100% damage reduction, right? So pretty crazy. And obviously, for events where you can dodge, which is most events in the game, with the exception of uh, you know the final stage of the legendary Goku events. Uh, he's gonna be dodging like almost everything, man. I know there's a lot of memes out there. People are like, oh, like UI never dodges. Like there's so many posts out there about like UI getting people killed. But this dude, first of all, he has defense, right? The, one of the main issues with the uh, MUI after he transforms is that he has no defense whatsoever. So if you get hit, you're screwed. He does have defense, but he also has that 70% chance to dodge. So he's gonna have an insane chance to dodge, but also be able to tank an attack if you need him to, right? So uh, really, really good. On top of that, he's getting T plus one and attack and defense plus 11%, up to 77% with each attack evaded. And since he has such a high chance to dodge, 70%, um, it shouldn't take you that long to stack up his full passive. Now, I'm not saying you can get it like in the first turn or even second turn, but I think for most fights, especially for uh, events like Super Battle Road where you get a lot of attacks incoming. By like the third turn, I'd say, if you play it correctly, if you put him in front of attacks like or slots where there are a good amount of attacks, it, it shouldn't take you more than like three or four appearances for this guy to have his full passive. I'd say, I'd say for most events, third time he comes back, comes back, he should probably be at his full passive. And when he's there, he gets key plus seven, which of course helps a ton when it comes to getting the ultra super off, right? It shouldn't be that hard when you get key plus seven immediately. As far as the actual percentage buff goes, it's not as simple as 77% plus 77% to equal 154%. That would make sense, logically. But because the 11% is actually calculated separately, it's actually a total boost of 213.29% once you get the full passive because it's a 19.47% boost for each evaded attack, because like I said, it's calculated separately. So at seven dodges, or after seven dodges, this guy will have attack and defense plus 213.29%, which is huge. That is massive, especially considering his max attack stat is 22,800, which, which if you guys don't realize, it's a very, very high attack stat. Um, so yeah, amazing, amazing passive, and uh, of course we'll do a comparison in a second between him and the LR Fusions, which like I said are currently regarded as the best units in the game, but um, I mean, just by himself, like just in a vacuum, not looking at anything else, amazing passive, man, amazing, amazing passive, I mean, 70% chance to dodge, and even at 50%, that's still very high, I think, like half the time he will be reducing damage by 100%, right? Uh, so great passive right there, no complaints there. Uh, links, Kamehameha, prepare for battle, golly power, over to flash, tournament of power, fierce battle, legendary power. I mean, it's a great link set. It's a really, really good link set. Uh, prepare for battle, obviously a ton of units have, uh, over to flash, tournament of power, so if you're running him with like, Super Saiyan Blue Kaken Goku, for example, they're gonna like get so much key for each other. And um, Fierce Battle as well, of course, which is essential. Legendary Power, I wish they would change into like a percentage boost, like 10% attack. Even 5% attack would be better than 5,000, but it is what it is. Maybe one day they'll update it, but uh, you know, every LR has to have Legendary Power right now, so not much to say there. It has six categories, Realm of God, Universe Survival Saga, Pure Saiyans, Represent Universe 7, Goku's Family, and Kamehameha, which of course, like some of the best categories in the game, man, Realm of Gods, Universe Survival Saga is solid, Pure Saiyans, one of the best categories, uh, Goku's Family, one of the best categories, Kamehameha, of course, one of the best categories. So he's gonna be a huge addition to already some of the strongest categories, some of the most OP categories in the game. Stats wise, very impressive, 22,800 attack, like I said, super high, and defense too, 12,556, 
very, very high defense too. So he has amazing stats. Um, he's just an amazing unit, man. Like last night when I made the video, I was like all hype, right? It was literally like, you know, I was just so excited for this guy, so happy that he did end up being a global first unit that I was, oh, I think that's the Uber Eats guy. Hold up. Anyways, as I was saying, last night I was just pure hype, man. Like in that state, I was like, I don't care what the comparison is. I don't care what anybody says. This is the new best unit in the game. I must have him. But now I've had some more time to, you know, just think it over, just be a little bit more objective about it. And uh, I think my answer to the question we originally asked has changed a little bit. Okay, so let's compare him to the Vegito that's coming for the five year anniversary as well as the LR Gogeta, right? So why don't we start with Vegito first? Um, as far as pre-transformation goes, there's no comparison, right? Like obviously, you know, leader skill wise, both these LRs are way better than the Goku because they're Tokon Fest LRs, it makes sense, right? So we're not gonna compare leader skills, but as far as super attack, uh, raises attack, raises attack, good. I think honestly, I would prefer that to disables enemy guard. Now for the passive, both these guys get attack and defense plus 70%, um, and they keep plus three, and then launches additional attack with the medium chance to become a super attack, so possibly two supers, but not very likely. And then they have a high chance to evade enemy attacks, um, including super attacks, as the third attacker. So you kind of, you're forced to put them in or take them off rotation if you want the dodges, right? Whereas for Goku, doesn't really matter what slot he's in, he's gonna get that 70% chance to dodge for the first 7 turns and then 50% after that. And of course he's stacking immediately, like as soon as he comes into the fight, he's gonna be stacking, you know, dodging and stacking his attack and defense, right? So yeah, pre-transformation, no comparison, you know, UI Goku is way better. But the interesting comparison of course comes after they transform, and in the transform state, or Gogeta and Vegito, I would, I would have to say they're they're better than the UI Goku. So, I mean, as you can see, they both get uh, attack and defense with every attack, but Gogeta, or Vegito rather, also launches a guaranteed additional super, so he's supering twice every single turn at the minimum, maybe a third time with some hidden potential investment, and uh, he's getting key plus one, he's getting attack and defense plus 7% uh, with each attack received, or sorry, each attack performed. And finally, one thing that really can't be overlooked is the ability to use these active skills, which just do massive amounts of damage. And of course, both of them have them. And uh, that's one thing that, you know, UI Goku just really can't compete with because he does not have an active skill, right? So that's a big difference maker right there. But even without the active skills, I would still say that the blue fusions are better than UI Goku because Gogeta gets effective against all types. Um, they are, they do have the ability to evade attacks as well if you guys want them to as the third attacker. So there's kind of a, you have that option, right? Obviously it's better to be able to put them in any slot you want, but if you want them to dodge, if you need them to dodge, they can do it for you. And as far as the stacking of attack and defense goes, both the LR fusions actually get the same total boost, like max boost of 213.29% after 11 attacks, which is the same thing as Ultra Instinct Goku after evading 7 attacks, which like I said, shouldn't take you that many turns or that much effort to achieve. And once again, this guy will be stacking immediately from the start of battle, whereas the fusions will take 4 turns first to uh, transform and then start building their attack and defense from there, right? So I guess the point I'm trying to make in this video is that the LR Goku the new global first LR Goku <laughs> is better when it comes to shorter events like Dokkan events, for example, or any events we are not, you know, playing for like 10, 20 turns or whatever. Um, he is going to be better right off the bat, but if you're playing a longer event like the Legendary Goku event, Infinite Dragon Ball History, or some future event like that, then the LR fusions will be better because you got to factor in the um, additional attack, super attack for Vegito, uh, raising attack and defense um, on the super is better than just straight up disabling enemy's guard in my opinion. And then you also have the option to make them dodge if you want to put them in the third slot. And uh, lastly, you know, there's the active skill which UI Goku just really cannot compete with since he does not have an active skill, right? So that just straight up is a win for the fusions. Um, so like I said guys, I mean, I would definitely say that the LR Goku is one of the best units in the game now, the LR Ultra Instinct Goku. 
Um, he is definitely, in my opinion, in the top five, maybe even top three right below these two. But uh, I would still put the LR Fusions above LR Ultra Instinct Goku. Just from an objective standpoint, I mean, just as a global main, as someone that, you know, has a lot of love for global, and, and I'm just super hyped for the fact that he's a global first, I would like to say that he is the new best unit in the game. But, I mean, having some time to think about it, just doing like a straight up comparison, I would have to say the LR Fusions are still better. But if you are running a shorter event, then you should probably bring the UI Goku instead. Unless you're running like Realm of Gods, you just bring all of them, right? But if, if, let's say we're just, we, we can only bring one or the other. We can bring one of the fusions or the Ultra Instinct Goku. Then for shorter events, I would definitely say UI Goku. For longer events, I would definitely say the LR fusions. And uh, that's my opinion, guys. That's how I feel about it right now. Um, one thing to know, Ashley, is that the max stats for the uh, LR Ultra Instinct Goku, uh, for the most part, better than the fusions. I mean, with the exception of HP, but who cares about HP, right? So, <laughs> attack attack is 22,120 for the Vegito. Of course, Goku has 22,800. And then defense, 11,788. Whereas Goku has 12,556. Of course, this is at max, so most people won't actually be able to achieve these stats. But that is one other interesting point of comparison, I guess. But uh, that's all I gotta say in today's video, guys. To summarize, this super long video, which I didn't expect to actually go this long, so that's my bad, but uh, hopefully it was useful, it was interesting to you guys. To summarize, basically, Ultra Instant Goku, in my opinion, a top 3, top 5 unit at worst. Um, not as good as the LR Fusions overall, and definitely not as good in longer events, but for shorter events, possibly more useful. That's my opinion, guys. I still love him. I still must have him. I'm still going balls deep for this guy. So stay tuned for a lot of videos, uh, a possible stream. Uh, no, a definite stream. A definite stream when the banner drops. I'll be dropping at least like 500 to 1,000 stones for that. And uh, yeah, guys, I'm hyped. I'm super, super hyped. I don't think the banner is going to be that good, if I'm being honest. But I don't really care if I'm being honest, man. Like, I really could care less. I just, I just want him. I just, I just need him in my collection. I got to have him. So... We're going to get him, guys. It's going to happen. So that's the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Once again, let me know in the comments down below how you feel about all of my analysis. If you guys have different opinions or different ideas, feel free to uh, let me know. Maybe I missed something. Maybe I made some mistake in my assessment in this video. Anything you have to say, any comments, any commentary, feel free to let me know in the comments down below. And that's it guys, that is the video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, if you liked the video, then make sure to like the damn video. And if it's your first time watching me, first time to the channel, and you'll like what you see, then definitely hit that big red subscribe button to join the Tiger Squad now. And while you're at it, hit that notification bell too, so that YouTube knows you wanna stay up to date with all my latest content. And that's it, I'm out of here. Until next time, hope you guys have a fantastic, fantastic day. I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media, signing out.